I want to welcome everybody to the meeting of the Amherst Design Review Board. My name is Catherine Porter and I am the chair of the Amherst Design Review Board and I'm calling this meeting to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A section 18 and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This public hearing of the town of Amherst Design Review Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can attend tonight's virtual meeting by using the Zoom login information provided on the meeting agenda listed on the meeting calendar, which, provide, <clears throat> which provided on the Town of Amherst website. We will begin with a roll call of, our, of the members of the Design Review Board who have been impaneled for the consideration of the items on tonight's agenda. Board members, please say aye or yes to acknowledge your attendance for the record. Lindsay Schnarr. Aye. Okay, Janet Marquard. Yes. Erica Zikos. Yes. Tom Long. Yes. Okay, also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, planner and staff liaison to the Design Review Board. The Design Review Board and its accompanying zoning regulations were created by town meeting on, in October 1983. The charge and purpose of the Design Review Board under Section 3.2 of the Zoning Bylaw is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources by providing for a detailed review of all changes in land use, the appearance of structures, and the appearance of sites which may affect these resources. The Design Review Board exercises this responsibility by providing design review and recommendations to private applicants and permit granting boards within specific overlay zoning districts in the town center, the design re review overlay district and the town common and the town common design review overlay district. Design review is also provided for town departments and permit granting boards with respect to town projects anywhere in Amherst, which will result in substantial alteration to the form or appearance of a structure or site. All design review boards are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. Each meeting recording will be uploaded in the Town of Amherst YouTube channel for public viewing. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the design to the board during the meeting after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will deliberate. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon recommendations for each respective application. Once the board has voted on its recommendations, the staff liaison will type up the recommendations for distribution to the applicant board and <clears throat> applicable land use board and building commissioner. And so we have tonight's agenda posted there. So shall we, Marina, we're gonna start with the um, uh, DRB 2020-08 Town of Amherst. Um, uh, Catherine. Uh, Catherine, if you don't mind, uh, we, uh, staff and I were talking a little while ago, uh, we have a consultant um, that okay, is sure. present, um, and we were wondering if the third uh, item <coughs> could, be, could go first, okay. which is regarding the North Amherst Library sure. Sure. Uh, extension building. All right, why don't we just go ahead then? Okay. So let's see, oh, Chris is here, Chris Farley, uh, and Chris Brestrup. Um, from the planning department. Um, Chris Farley is a architect with Kuhn Riddle and is working with the town uh, regarding uh, the uh, site plan review application uh, for this project. Uh, it's uh, the, uh, the planning board will be opening its public hearing in the next couple of weeks. I don't know the exact date. 
Uh, but um, Chris, if you, um, I can certainly share my screen for you, or if you want to share your screen, let me know. And uh, if you could walk the DRB through what, you know, obviously what is there now and what are you proposing? And, you know, as Catherine said in her opening statement, you, you know, the design review board is here to look at exterior changes and, um, you know, uh, I just just lost the page. Hold on a second. And you know, at minimum, they're they're looking at uh, design review standards of the zoning bylaw under section three point two zero four one, which gets into height, proportions, relations to structures and spaces, shape, landscape, scale, directional expression, architectural site details, and signs. So, just wanted to remind everyone of that. So cool. Okay. Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks very much for um, uh, letting me come and, and talk about this project. Um, uh, Maureen, I think I'm going to ask you, are, are you, do, do you have queued up the, um, the site plan review application and or the, the PowerPoint presentation I sent today? I don't have any. I, did you email me that? I, I, I did, but I, I have it queued up here. I'm happy to share that if yeah, that would be great. Okay. I, I think what I'm going to suggest is uh, we have a, a fairly simple PowerPoint presentation. It's about eight, eight or nine uh, images. And I think it gives a pretty good overview of the project. And if necessary, we can get into more detail, but I think that's a good starting point. And it'll just take, I think, a few minutes to, to give a, an overview of the project. Um, so let's see here. So I am going to, I think I'm just going to stay here on this. I'm not going to actually do the full slideshow if that's okay with everybody. Uh, I mean, the, I'm not going to do the full screen slideshow rather. Um, so so uh, this, uh, this project is uh, something that came about a couple of years ago uh, at town meeting. Um, there was a sum of money uh, that was uh, dedicated to a feasibility study to make the library accessible and to provide some uh, community meeting space. So we've been working with the town, uh, Kuhn Riddle has been working with the town for, uh, for about two years. Uh, we actually just finished uh, our schematic design phase and we're now in the town permitting phase uh, where we're gonna be doing site plan review, um, uh, accessibility review, um, uh, the, the design review uh, board review uh, and then hopefully if we get all the, the necessary approvals we'll be moving into design development and construction documents later this year. Um, so this is a, a view of the southern facade, the main entry of the, uh, of the Amherst, uh, North Amherst Library. Um, one of our goals with this project is to really uh, maintain the integrity of this building as much as possible. Uh, and certainly one of the goals is to keep this main entry facade um, as, as unchanged as possible. And uh, uh, the next few slides will show you a little bit about how, how we're, we're planning to do that. I will say that, that um, in order to achieve the accessibility uh, of the library, which uh, as you can see here is up about six or seven risers, about four feet uh, from the existing walkway, existing grade, what we're proposing is to make a fully accessible entry around the back on the north side. So this, this, um, uh, this front facade will, be, will remain unchanged uh, but the main entry to the library will be around the back. Uh, just for some, some context and some history, this is a, a photograph, historical photograph of the library. Uh, this is Montague Road on the right and Sunderland Road on the left. Um, uh, this is a little blacksmith shop that was there at the time this photograph was taken. But it's, the, the library has really remained virtually unchanged from the exterior since it was built in, in 1893. Uh, so here's a proposed site plan. Um, you can see on the right here is Montague Road. On the left is Sunderland Road. 
it's a it's a triangular shaped lot. Uh, the existing library is this white uh, rectangle here in the middle, and then this cross hatched or this hatched area is the proposed uh, addition. And then uh, we also propose that the existing parking area, which is quite informal, uh, that, that it be more formalized and upgraded so that we can provide full accessibility uh, to accessible parking spaces and an accessible path that would come uh, up onto a walkway and in the, the new accessible entry to the building and ultimately bring people into the existing library. Um, Oh, one other thing I, I would mention, uh, because really the only buildable area is, is on this north side, just because of the setbacks and the narrowness of the site, the, the, the idea is to, is to really not uh, change the front or the sides of the buildings, uh, the, the building at all. We're going to try to maintain as many of the existing plantings uh, around the front and the two sides and really just concentrate the construction on the north side of the building. So this is a, a floor plan of, of, of the existing building kind of in gray here at the bottom and the proposed uh, addition. So uh, one of the goals of the, the aesthetic goals of this project is to try to maintain the integrity of the existing building and to really let it stand uh, on its own as much as possible. So what we've done is we have provided a, 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 the addition here in the back and then uh, connected the addition to the existing building with a narrow connector is what we call it, um, to, to try to, uh, to minimize the area of the existing building where the, where the new building connects uh, to provide it or, or to, to protect and, and um, uh, uh, maintain as much of the existing fabric as possible, to maintain as many of the existing windows as possible for natural light and, and some views. Um, and, and really, as I said, to maintain the integrity of the building and to try to make the addition really a secondary and complementary structure. Um, so uh, we, we certainly think we've achieved that uh, uh, pretty well. Um, so th there were three main goals of this project as, um, as given to us by the town. One is to make the existing library level, which is about four feet above grade, fully accessible. Uh, number two was to provide a community meeting room uh, that could be used during uh, off uh, library hours or, or off hours. Uh, in this particular plan, there's a set of double doors here in the middle. Those doors could be locked uh, when the library is closed and the public could still have access to the meeting room and the accessible bathrooms. Um, uh, and then the, 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 the third uh, objective was to uh, uh, upgrade the systems in the existing library uh, L, uh, to LED lighting, uh, to a fully electric heat pump, heating and cooling system um, and also to, to, to make sure that the addition uh, is zero net energy ready. Uh, we are not providing a near uh, zero uh, net energy building. Um, the, the, the proposed cost of this project doesn't require it, um, but we have been uh, directed by the town to try to make it uh, uh, as efficient, as practical, uh, and to make it zero uh, net energy ready. So we have, uh, really quite a quite a good envelope um, uh, 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 insulation uh, air sealing um, again electric uh, heat pump systems for cooling and heating um, uh, triple paned windows etc so so we do have a very energy efficient building um, this is a simple section uh, through the, the new entry which is here on the left uh, the parking area would be on the left hand side uh, a covered entry at grade coming into an entry lobby. And then the connector uh, provides that, that connection up to the existing library level. Um, actually, I'm gonna go back here for a second. I, uh, the connector has a, a main staircase on axis that goes up to the library. And then to the right of that is a wheelchair lift. 
So that provides the full accessibility to the library level. Uh, the wheelchair lift also goes down to the basement level, uh, but that's really only for staff. Um, and then there's also a, 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 a stairway that goes to the basement, but the, the basement is not open to the public. It's just the main library level and then the new addition. Um, uh, I'm not sure there's too much more to say about this, but, uh, but simply to reiterate that because the, uh, the library, existing library floor level is so much above grade, we didn't really feel it was feasible to try to prov provide full accessibility at the front of the building um, uh, because it would really uh, be quite intrusive to provide that to the front of the building. So the new entry will be on the north side on the left in this drawing. Um, then there's a couple of series of, of uh, renderings uh, of the existing building here on the left, uh, the connector here in the middle, uh, and the addition on the right. Um, you have to forgive the colors. They're not quite uh, as accurate as they could be, um, uh, but, but they're, they are approximate. So um, uh, let's see. So what, what we really wanted to do was to take our, our uh, our cues, uh, design cues from the existing building. So we've, we've, uh, in terms of massing, uh, in terms of materials, in terms of fenestration, we've really taken our, our main cues from the existing building, uh, but we've treated the materials and the colors a little bit differently. Um, we, we, we wanted to use the same materials. So for instance, uh, this bottom band, this kind of reddish, uh, uh, band at the bottom of the existing building is wood shingles, painted wood shingles. So we really have, have pulled that material into the addition. Uh, but in order to, um, to make it, uh, uh, to not be an imitation of the existing, but to connect it, we've chosen to propose uh, that, that, that they be uh, natural shingles that are just sealed. Uh, we also felt that that made, uh, helped to make this addition uh, really uh, secondary to the, the primary structure. Uh, we've imagined that the, the, the darker green trim all around, that that will help tie it into the existing green trim. So it's not the same color, but it's in the same family. Uh, and then the uh, standing seam metal roof, um, while different from the existing library, it certainly lends the addition that same sense of permanence. Uh, the, uh, the, the roof of the existing library is a, a, is a slate roof. Um, so this is the, the north side. Uh, this is the, the new entry level. So there's a gable here, um, a very steep gable. We've taken this gable pitch directly from the existing gable at the south side, the existing entry to the, to the library. Uh, and we've really tried to kind of replicate well, replicate is the wrong word. We, we, we have tried to take our cues from the existing building to create a new entry that has a connection to the existing entry. Um, and then there's also a secondary gable here on the left, which is uh, um, uh, 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 kind of a bay window and, and a, a, a gable structure that uh, is part of the meeting room to the left. Um, as I said, this is, this is going to be fully accessible um, um, from, from the north. Uh, and then the, the, the west side elevation, uh, again, is quite similar to the east side. Uh, it's the same materials. Um, one of the things that it's, uh, I, you, I'm sure you can tell from this, uh, because, the exist, because the addition is at grade and um, uh, it doesn't have as much of a full attic as the existing building. Uh, the form of it is also going to be quite a bit lower. The, the peak of the roof is going to be quite a bit lower. Um, and so that's another way in which the, the new addition uh, uh, will not overwhelm the existing. Um, and then we have a couple of uh, eye level perspectives. Uh, this is from the north side, the new parking area. Uh, it shows the existing building kind of peeking out here on the right um, and uh, an approximate shows an approximation of what the, the plantings will be uh, on, on, 
uh, on around the building. Um, this view shows uh, the two accessible parking spaces. Uh, we'll have a walkway here uh, that goes east-west that connects in with the existing walkways on Montague Road to the left and on Sunderland Road to the right. Um, and I think that's about it for the for the overview. Is um, can I uh, describe anything else or answer any questions that anyone might have? Any questions? Hi, Chris. Um, thanks for the great introduction to the project, and it looks very exciting. Oh, um, thanks, Lindsay. Nice to nice to see you. By the way. You too. It's been a while. Um, yeah. So um, I'm sure you touched on this, but I didn't hear you talk much about the site access from uh, Montague versus Sunderland Road. Can you go back to that for a moment? Sure. Um, so I believe from what I reviewed earlier that the access is being cut off from Montague Road, correct? That's correct. Okay. And, and is there anything proposed in terms of right now there's like some Really lovely cinder blocks that line that side of the road. I'm curious uh, to hear what is being proposed for that edge along the parking, the new parking edge and the and the street. Well, so Lindsay, that's a that's it's a good question because um, when we first started working with the town on this project, uh, Guilford Mooring, um, the head of the DPW, told us about the the proposed realignment of Sunderland Road. Uh, where Sunderland Road would be coming, uh, they, they, they would be realigned just to the north of this site and would join uh, Montague Road. There are a number of different options there. It mm -hmm. might, be a, might be a rotary, it might be a traffic light. However, uh, we were instructed very clearly by the town to ignore that realignment for the purposes of this project. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we did feel it was, it was most prudent to, um, to have the, the access to the parking area from Sunderland Road and to cut off that, that access um, to, to Montague Road. Mm -hmm. um, the intention from a design point of view is just to continue the existing sidewalk uh, that comes along here. Um, there'll be uh, you know, a, just a, um, a, 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 a grass planted area uh, between the sidewalk and the, the new parking area. Uh, but aside from that, we haven't proposed uh, uh, plantings, any more extensive, extensive plantings to some degree because we, uh, we have been told that even though the, the schedule of the, re, uh, the realignment is not known, that the realignment will be moving forward. And I think that we, we anticipate that a more extensive landscaping plan will probably be developed as part of that realignment. Okay, that sounds good, thank you. Yep. Other comments? Um, Erica, yeah. Thanks, Chris. I enjoyed that Hi, presentation. Hi. Um, I, I have to say I'm really, um, really appreciating how this building does uh, reference, kind of take its inspiration from the existing, which is so unique and full of character. It finds its way, um, way to be a good partner without trying to take over, even though it's, you know, square footage is larger. You've done a nice job of, kind of finding that, that home, that secondary position for it. Um, well, thank you. I am curious about uh, two things. Uh, one is when you talked about it being um, net zero ready. Um, I didn't know if you'd done a solar study to see if uh, panels could eventually go on that new south sloping uh, roof that you've designed. And if you gave any consideration to that, are the locations of the bathrooms an issue? Because there will be penetrations on the roof. Um, like, what does it mean in your mind to be net zero ready? Okay, well, so that's a, that's a very good question. Um, well, it, I, I think being net zero ready, uh, I think first and foremost means that we design a building 
that is as energy efficient as practical. Uh, I don't say as possible, but as practical given uh, the, you know, the real life considerations, budget considerations. So, so we're trying to, uh, you know, to make a very well insulated tight envelope. We're trying to use very energy efficient systems. Um, we, we, we did explore uh, the idea of, of somehow utilizing PV on this site. Uh, and then we were, we were instructed by the town that if, if this were to become a, a, a zero net energy project, that it's likely that the PV panels would be located offsite. Uh, so, so we haven't really explored extensively the idea of putting PV panels on the, on the roof of the addition. Um, I do think it would be uh, probably fairly easy to do. Uh, we, we haven't done solar studies to understand you know, whether the existing building would be a barrier to, yeah, to, to, to you know, to good energy <laughs> production. But we have, you know, we have a, a wood truss uh, roof system planned. Um, we could certainly uh, uh, structure it so that it could support panels and there would be enough space in that uh, interstitial space between uh, that south facing roof slope and the ceiling of the, of the, uh, the meeting room and the, and the, uh, the bathrooms to be able to maintain any electrical or, or, or other connections to those panels. Um, but, uh, but again, we, we were instructed by the town to, to really not uh, uh, delve into the, the idea of putting PV on this site. Thank you. And then I um, sure. was wondering, my second question is about the, um, the entry sequence for um, differently abled folks. I, I see that there's a there's a planter zone directly in front of the entrance. Yep, right where um, yeah. which I actually like because it kind of extends that line of symmetry out into the into the parking. Um, but is is did you decide to to locate the handicap parking places a little bit off to the side because of grading? Like what was the inspiration there? Well I think a little bit farther. I, I, I think it's mostly because of the, the, the issue you, you just mentioned. I, I think we didn't want people to necessarily come out of the building and be faced immediately with a, a, a loading zone or parking spaces. We thought that it was a way to really help uh, uh, provide a, uh, a, a greener, a little softer uh, sequence, uh, mostly a visual sequence. And our feeling was that moving the two accessible parking spaces off to the side by 15 feet or so, uh, that that was not gonna provide any great hardship. Um, I, it, it wasn't because of, of grading issues or elevation issues, it was an aesthetic and, a, and a, an experience uh, uh, decision-making process. Okay. Fair enough. Um. Yeah, and then I just, I worry a little bit about the tree and your rendering that's located in that spot might do a great deal of masking of the entrance um, from a distance. It might call attention to it, but I think that, you know, working, I guess you're working with Berkshire Design Group, you know, to choose that yeah. species just right. So it's not, it'll only be so low for so long. <laughs> um, right. Now that's, a, uh, Erica, that's a, that's a very good point. And I, we, we've talked a little bit with, um, uh, Mike Liu at Berkshire Design Group about exactly what those plantings on that little island, that little peninsula will be. Uh, but your point is well taken. I think that if we do end up with a tree there, I think it does need to be a species that, that can really not get too big because it would easily overwhelm the entry. And, and just also provide kind of a, a maintenance and, and, and shading issue, I think, for the, um, uh, the parking spaces on either side. So uh, it, your, your point is well taken, um, and, and we'll definitely <clears throat> study that a little more. Jan, do you have any uh, comments? Yeah, um, I agree with Erica that you've done a great job of um, subjugating the new portion to the, the main building. Um, and I like a lot of the decisions you made about how to attach it and where things go. I'm just I'm a little uncomfortable with the way that the appearance of the addition both takes the pitch 
and the gable of this Victorian kind of neo-Gothic original. And then with the natural siding and colors it, it, and those, those piers, those columns and, and bases on the porch, I just feel like it suddenly throws it into craftsman era or something. And I, I don't know, I feel like it, it, at the point that you've put those and the, and the natural shingles, it stops coordinating smoothly with the original building. I'm just wondering if they weren't painted more um, like the original or at least the same height bands of separation between the lower, that red base and the yellow upper, you know? I, I don't know, it's, and even the windows with the little panes at the top and the, the way that there's wide moldings, it just starts looking to me like, um, more like arts and crafts than the, um, I mean, later craftsmen, than the, the purer style of the original. It's just my first impression. Having never seen this, it's just, you know, how it hit me. Okay, well, that's, uh, I, I, I certainly appreciate that, that, uh, that comment. Um, I, I mean, I, 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 I guess to be quite honest, I, I think that, um, you know, our, our intention was certainly not to, not to try to pull in, you know, a craftsman style or an arts and crafts look and feel. Uh, we did try to, you know, to, to pull the details and the proportions of, of, of trim, et cetera, from the existing building, the massing of the building. Um, but uh, we are, as I said, we just finished up schematic design. Uh, once we get through the permitting phase with the town, we will be uh, looking at some of these details a little more carefully. Um, and I, I, I'm happy to, to make a note of that uh, to our design team and uh, to study that a little more and, and, and you know, to maybe to uh, do some adjustments to, to, to try to make sure that that our goal, our intention, which is to have this addition really feel like it is a complement uh, and to some extent a reflection of the existing building and the existing style to make sure that we do achieve that. So I, I, I think your, your point is well taken. Could you show me the, show us the south entrance again, just to see how the other side of the door is handled there? Oh yeah, see that's really different. Okay. Yeah, I we we did have a discussion, you know, uh, as we were designing this addition. So there are these, you know, uh, smaller round columns here, mm -hmm. uh, with the, and then with the shingled piers at the corner of the addition. So the you know the new round columns certainly is is kind of drawing from these, but obviously the proportion is quite different. We do have uh, we do have a concern that this building not feel uh, postmodern. Uh, and so if we need to look at reproportioning um, uh, or, or modifying some of those details, uh, I, I think uh, we're certainly open to that. Okay, I, um, also just the upper um, lights in the new windows uh, in all the small panes, I don't see them in the old one. The, uh, it, it is hard to, hard to see, but the, uh, this double window here, uh -huh. uh, or well, <laughs> or single window, is th this is what it looks like? Oh, okay, it does. So look there are these, you know, four four uh, uh, clear stories that we pulled directly into the existing building. And then it's two over one. It's the same. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And you know, some of the other details you can see in the in the dormers here in the attic. Uh, with you know the 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 very large uh, you know trim around the uh, the arched window with the keystone etc. We've yep. pulled some of those details in as well. Keystone I noticed on the north side to echo that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess um, I, it just it just struck me. I think it's mostly the unpainted um, shingles and. Um, that color with the green, and then just the fact that they're a natural shingle along with those larger posts or columns, whatever. Um, just, yeah, it just started to look much later in terms of style dating. 
So. No, I, I, as I said, I think your your point is well taken, and uh, I think we'll definitely give this a, another look, and uh, and we'll you know we'll talk about refining this to 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 reflect the existing building. I mean, I could see those two just becoming rather fat, simple Doric columns without those um, bases that expand at the bottom that just make it look so much lighter. I don't know, but I'm sure you'll want to play with it. So otherwise, I think it's great. Uh -huh. Okay, well, well, thank you. Thank you for the for the comments. I, I appreciate it. Sure. I think my only comment, which I just think it's a beautiful building and how lucky you were as a designer to have the space to do something like that, to put it on the back as, a, as opposed to having to stick it on the side and then you'd be hopeless trying to capture that iconic uh, North Amherst Library look. I, the only thing that I sort of throws me off it, are the shingles of that color. Um, and I don't know, maybe this goes along with what Jan was saying, but um, I don't know. I wondered if there might be a consideration to make, to stain those or paint those more in a similar color to the uh, library as opposed to standing out because it really is a very beautiful sort of standalone building with the shingles the way they are. So that was, that'd be my only suggestion that it's unfortunate that it couldn't be um, blend in with one of the colors on the uh, original library, but others may feel differently. But uh, other than that, I think it's a wonderful design and uh, uh, kudos, it's gonna be amazing. But will... the color thing is just, uh, throwing me a bit. Sure. Well, well, th thank you uh, uh, very much for that. I, you know, I, I, I think that one of the main driving points of keeping these shingles natural, and, and I will say that because this is a computer envision, you know, envisioning, uh, the colors are really not quite right. They're a little more right. garish yeah. than they are or would be in real life. Uh -huh. But I, I I think that we intentionally did go to the natural shingles so that uh, we were not, that, that, that the, the addition did not appear to, uh, to be trying to imitate the, the existing building. Right, yeah. But having said that, uh, I, 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 I can understand your, your comment. And um, I will say again that because we are in, in uh, you know, the early, Early to mid stages of design, uh, we do have flexibility to to look at some alternatives, um, and and we we definitely want to get it right. We don't, uh, you know, we don't we 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 want to try to strike that balance between imitation and something that feels foreign. We want it to we want them to work together, and um, if that means exploring different options for either staining or even painting the shingles, um, uh, I, I, I think we would be willing to do that. Okay, okay. Uh, Tom, did you have any comments? I know you're gonna see this again at the uh, planning board. Tom there. Yeah, I, had, I just had a couple of quick comments. For, uh, so first question, um, well, actually, let me just say, I really enjoyed the presentation. I think you guys did a really great job. Um, Thank you. you know, across the board, I, I've been I've been studying the elevations, and um, the renderings were unexpected compared to the, the the elevations because I found the elevations really clued into a lot of the nuance that um, I think is being raised here. And obviously, when you come to these meetings, everyone pig piles onto <laughs> the issue that's being you know foregrounded here, which is the color of these shingles. And and so again, when I look at the elevations. I see a really powerful continuity, but not a copy. Um, but when I see the renderings, there I don't hate it. I don't like. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm sure maybe when it's actually built with the right materials, it might look different. But but I do think it is something to experiment with, because um, because because um, like I said, the the drawings really tell a story that I think the renderings aren't doing at the moment. Um, but, I, but I, again, I really like the form, I like the massing, I like a lot of that stuff. Um, one of my questions was about the, the 
existing entry is that being fully shut out so if you wanted to enter the building through the traditional entrance you could not experience that anymore um yes that's the idea so uh the architectural access board and the accessibility requirements um you know for good reason don't don't permit some people but not all people to to use this existing entry uh, got it we we do intend to maintain it as an egress, uh, you know, as an emergency egress. Um, but uh, the, the intention is to make sure that everybody enters the building uh, equally. And that really the only way for that to occur is on the, the new, through the new north Got entry. Got it. Okay, good. That was a great answer. Thank you. Um, the, other, the other thing I think, uh, that Jan brought up is the entry for me. I really think there's a beautiful, there's something beautiful happening when I, again, I'm looking at the elevation. So it's, um, when I see the renderings, that's why I'm a little bit surprised because I, I think the renderings do that facade justice. But um, when I look at the elevations um, and I see from the west side, I see um, the south uh, entry and the north entry. I feel like there's a missed opportunity there just in terms of some of the language that's there. It can be built in a contemporary way and designed in a contemporary way, but there's some really nice nuance. And yeah, you can't see it in the rendering, but um, in the in the elevations, you can see it. But anyway, I, I like, you know, the it, elements like the railing and the posts that they're using there are interesting and it, they don't feel like you're, you know, you'd be copying them by stealing some things from there. Um, and then my last super uh, nuanced and strange question is, I was truly thrown off by the scale of these windows. There are two sets, one on the new front facade and one on the, I guess, the west elevation. And I, they just feel out of proportion to me. So, and you know, the rest of the windows across the entire project are clusters of smaller windows with um, larger tops. Those larger windows just feel out of proportion and I'm wondering um, based on what you see in this elevation for instance the existing building the clustering of those larger or smaller windows into a larger set to produce I want more light I, I see why they're bigger um, but I'm wondering if clustering them and doing something uh, clear story might you know another level of clear story in the same language might um, allow just as much light but not seem out of proportion to the kind of larger, seemingly Anderson style kind of window that I see here. So I, again, I, I, that, those are just things that were very nitpicky, but in a you know design like this where nuance is everything, those things just kind of jumped out at me. But, um, but overall, like I said, the, the, you know, the whole project looks really great and it's super exciting to uh, see this come to life. Well, th th thank you, uh, you know, for the, for the positive feedback and 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 for the you know for the comments uh, about the shingles and the difference between the you know the, the, the kind of uh, you know the black line elevations and the renderings and and the windows I I totally get it I see your point and I do think that we uh, we we chose the larger windows primarily for connection to the outdoors and for bringing light in but I I totally understand what you're saying about them really being um, a different element than the other windows, and certainly a different element than the uh, uh, the windows in the existing building, different proportion, etc. So, um, I, I I think that's something that's uh, definitely worth another look as well. I have a couple more Great. quick Thank things, you. hopefully. Um, one is I didn't hear you talk much about signage, and I know this is you know an addition, so. Perhaps there isn't a plan for adding any, but I wanted to just at least ask that question. You know, I wish I had a good answer uh, for that. I, I assume you're talking about exterior signage? Yes. So um, we, I'll be honest, we have not fully addressed signage. Um, okay. I think our intention is to have a, some sort of kind of a monument ground mount sign. Uh, perhaps that would be on this west side over here where the vehicles come in. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it would be in this island. Uh, you know, I, I, I uh, just to be honest, we haven't explored that fully and we certainly need to do that. And we need to do it uh, as part of our site plan review. So um, okay. 
And then um, that's fine. I just wanted to touch on it. And then I have two other really basic comments. One is it concerns me a little bit having <clears throat> um, the sidewalk right where people are pulling in. And I wonder if you've talked about having like a curb in the paving um, in the parking spaces as a separate element from the curb that goes up to the sidewalk or just some, some kind of buffer there. Um, that's not something you necessarily need to answer, but it's just maybe something to discuss with Berkshire Design, um, just as an additional kind of safety feature. Yeah, that's a good um, point. And then my only other question, and I, I don't want to belabor this too long, but I, I don't know if we talked much about the kind of connector roof. Um, I see that there's, you know, I know that there's some height um, uh, restrictions to deal with in terms of kind of like you're stepping up and then you, you're at the, you're really at the, the original building level in that connector, right? Well, that, yes. So, so um, the, the roof here, the connector shown in this view mm -hmm. is really just about at the, I think it's at about the eight foot level. Okay. So um, it's as low as it can go. It, it, it's, it's just about as low as it can go. Yeah. Also, the other thing is, and I apologize, I, I, I should have had, uh, probably a different view, but we did, we, we did try to align this fascia of this connector roof with some of the trim on the, uh, on the mm -hmm. north side of the building so that there's a, uh, a yeah. stronger connection. I see uh, that. And then there, I assume there's a window in that gable above it, so you're limited by that height, right? Well, so this gable is into the attic, and there actually is not, and oh. uh, there's not a window. The, the attic is unfinished and unoccupied. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think um, uh, I don't have a photo available. I, I think that there's a similar treatment. It, um, there's some sort of a trim treatment. Okay. Oh, you know, so one of the things I, I neglected to mention um, is, let's see here. So in, in plan mm -hmm. right here is a chimp is a fireplace. Oh. And there's a chimney that goes all the way up to the roof, through the roof. Uh, right now it's being used as a, a ventilation for the furnace. Mm -hmm. um, now the, the, the chimney, none of that masonry, masonry is exposed on the exterior of the building and it's all on the inside of the framing. So the only piece of the chimney that shows on the exterior is the two or three feet that, that um, extend through the roof of that gable. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's right here. Uh, but the intention is that the entire chimney in the fireplace all the way down to the basement is going to be removed because that it, it's a barrier to this point of access for the accessibility for the stairs and the lift. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I guess my, my, where I was eventually going was just questioning the flat roof there and and again i don't we don't need to have a long discussion about it i'm sure there's reasons why that you know is the <coughs> strategy that was chosen um but i guess i just that's kind of the one place where my eye is is just curious if having um, an intersecting gable there might help to um would just be i would be curious to see it but yeah. We did. We did explore uh, the, uh, this this connector being a gable, and I think our well, well, two things. One is we did explore it, and our feeling was that it called more attention to it in a way that <coughs> that seemed um, inappropriate, uh, and also that it 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 covered up more of that fabric uh, uh, within that 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 gable, that north facing gable. Um, the second thing is, and it, uh, this, these, these elevations, these renderings don't, I think, fully tell the whole picture, but our, our intention is that these plantings here uh, will perhaps be a little bit taller. And the idea is what we would like to do is we'd really like to screen that connector so that it totally sits back um, and becomes uh, the least important element. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and if you, you know, if you, if, if you look at the plan here, so, you know, the existing east elevation and west elevation of the library, uh, you know, it, it does, it sticks out quite a bit from that connector as do, as does the, the addition. And I, I think our, our intention is that the plantings 
will really help screen this connector so it'll, it, it will become uh, much less important and much more, much less vis visually present than the existing building and the addition. Is there anything that's going to be housed on the roof of that flat area? No, the only thing we have there uh, is a skylight. I see. Okay. But no, no, no equipment. All the equipment will be ground mount. Um, uh, there, there'll, there'll be a, a, uh, you know, a, 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 a fence and some plantings that will shield the ground mount uh, heat pump equipment on the Great. west side. Well, it looks like a really exciting project. Mm -hmm. It, um, it is. It, it's a. It's a fabulous project. I. I, I we. Uh, we've really been having a lot of fun with it, and. Um, yeah, it's a. It's a. It's exciting to be working with such a beautiful, you know, gem of a building. Um, uh, Catherine, I, yes. I just wanted to mention we uh, probably should uh, move on yeah, to the next topic in yeah. a few minutes. Bef right. But uh, before that, uh, it looks like Miss Brestrup has raised okay. her hand. All right. Go ahead, Chris. Thank you. Um, I just have a few things to mention and you don't need to answer these now, but you will be coming to the planning board on March 17th. So um, one thing that came up when we talked about this project internally was that the building commissioner thought there would be a good opportunity to get a variance from the architectural access board to allow the, fr the current front entrance to remain as a, use, a usable entrance, um, even though you have an accessible entrance on the other side. He thought that it's possible that you may be going after other um, variances with the AAP and you could bundle them together. So that's just a thought. Um, but, you know, I think we in the planning department would love it if you could keep that, um, that main entrance that currently exists open. Um, second thing is I wondered when you look at the picture of the front of the building, um, which we're looking at now, um, it's, you know, very sort of, I don't know, old fashioned. Um, and it's going to be really different in terms of the landscaping. I'm not even thinking about the building. I'm thinking about the landscaping and the benches. And um, I wondered if there's going to be some effort to tie in the benches that you're going to use on the other side. I think you are proposing a bench <coughs> the parking lot on the other side. So is there any thought to have the benches be compatible or is there any thought to sort of refurbishing these benches and making them look more inviting? Um, so that's an, a thought. Again, you don't have to answer it. Um, and I think you've got a bike rack and a bench at the uh, main, at the new main entrance. So the planning board will want to hear about that. Okay. And then the other thing is, I think this existing building was recently painted. Is that right? Uh, I, I believe it was. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's just a question I was thinking, are you going to be repainting this building um, when you do the work on the other building? Or, you know, there may be more of an opportunity to make the colors more compatible you know, if you think about doing something with this building as well as the other building. So again, don't answer, just okay. think about those things for the planning board meeting. Okay. Right. Well, okay. Thank, thank you very much uh, uh, for that, Chris. Um, I, I had not heard the idea of the variance for the front entry, but it's an intriguing idea and I'll, I'll, we'll definitely talk about it. Okay. okay. So I think we've gotten some good uh, suggestions for uh, Chris and now Maureen, uh, would you like a motion or, you know, where we can. Uh, sure. Do you mind if I just kind of um, go through my list um, yeah, go ahead. Of, okay. of kind of comments? Yes. Uh, so there were, you know, comments about shingles and whether, you know, maybe they should be stained or painted. <clears throat> Uh, the larger windows feel out of proportion. Um, perhaps um, the uh, Chris Farley and his team can explore that some more. Um, there was a discussion about signage. Where you know what kind of signage is a monument sign? Where would that be located on the property? Could there be a buffer between um, the walkway and the parking spaces? There. Are questions about the color of the trim and just coloring in general. And then um, Chris um, 
Restrup had just commented about, um, about, uh, you know, if possible, keep the style of the, uh, the benches consistent, uh, you know, throughout the site um, and, you know, provide, I, I, I think the site plan shows the bike rack, um, you know, right? Yeah. So yeah. for the planning board, you would want to show, you know, the, the, that's, that spec or, or, um, or a, a, like a, a sample photo. And um, the question about, will you be repainting the existing building uh, exterior? And if, you know, if so, that could help sort of make, make this project uh, more coherent, coherent um, with the, the color, uh, the coloring. Um, did I miss anything? May well, I clarify I something I said? Oh, sure. I didn't necessarily mean that the benches needed to be the same. I thought that they needed to be brought up to the same level of sort of looking good. Um, and I would understand that the benches that exist there may be memorial benches and may mean a lot to somebody who gave them. So I'm not suggesting that they be thrown okay. away and new benches be brought here, but just that these be made to look as nice as the benches that are, as the bench that's going to be put there, if it means yeah. painting it or putting new slats in or whatever it means. Yeah. That's all. And also, uh, Maureen, uh, Jan had made some comments about the character of the building. Uh, oh, sure. Yep. About and about whether, you know, could it be the post? Yes. Yeah, the post and yeah. um, the, the pillars, the post. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and the other really quickly throw one little thing in and that's the decoration on the gables makes a sense in terms of uh, sort of simplifying and modernizing what's on the other end but the the circle inside that arch over that window doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever it mm -hmm. just it doesn't fit mm -hmm. um, it, it, they're using the the arch form even inside their their gables and the circle doesn't doesn't fit either style so that's just a little thing to maybe look at again that's it okay good all right I, okay. that, that's that's a that's a that's a very good comment, and we've received that comment uh, actually, uh, you know, from members of our team as well. So thank you for that. It just looks okay. gratuitous. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> so, uh, given all of that, can we have a motion that uh, we have reviewed the North Amherst Library project and offered our suggestions? And I guess we want to say. <laughs> We approve it. Uh, uh, you would give a, would you want to make a motion to yes. give a positive recommendations with yes. the comments okay. that right. I just mentioned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Jan, would you like to make that motion? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Okay. I guess I'm usually the one who makes motions. You are. <laughs> uh, okay. I move that um, we, we um, would like to positively reinforce the proposed redesign of the North Amherst Library with uh, multiple suggestions for uh -huh. thinking um, some details. Um, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good, okay, I sort of threw you. <laughs> it's a you. rough one to do because whenever we have it was. For it was. Yeah. I never quite know how to word them, but. I know, is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Okay, I'll go, I'll go through the list and uh, for the vote. Uh, Lindsay. Aye. Uh, Janet. Aye. Erica. Erica. Are you there? Erica. I am, I'm sorry, I was unmuted. Hi. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Tom. Aye. Okay, and Catherine, I. All right. Uh, so thank you, Chris. You've, uh... Thank thank you all very much for taking the time uh, and for giving me the we opportunity. And thanks very much for all your comments. It's yeah, really very helpful. Been helpful. Good. So. Yeah, it, forward to seeing it. Yeah, and as uh, I believe Chris Restrup had mentioned, the planning board will be opening the public hearing mm -hmm. uh, for the site plan review of this project at their March seventeenth meeting uh, which starts at 6 30 and the agenda and zoom information can be found on the town of amherst uh, calendar good if anyone's All right. interested so now where are what are we going to uh thanks so very now, much oh I'll thanks see, bye bye chris see, bye, nice chris. to see you all you too
Um, so next we're going to, um, well, I guess before we move on to the next uh, item, which will be uh, the bank center and the grant that's related to the bank center in, in, in that sort of vicinity. The third item on our agenda is regarding the Pomeroy Village intersection. And I heard earlier today that if we, um, if we run it out of time this evening, that's okay. And we don't have time to review that. Um, the town council and perhaps the, the TSO, um, they had originally given us a shorter deadline for boards and committees to review it, but it seems like we might have a little more time. So um, if we need to hold off for that item, that's okay. fine. All right, good. So let's do the bang center then. Sure. And yeah, so we have uh, Ben uh, Breger here. Uh, he's one of our staff planners um, who uh, uh, wrote the grant and um, and we uh, successfully were uh, given the Mass so DOT grant for this project. So he'll um, pull up his screen and, and, and walk you through um, this proposal. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Maureen. Um, yeah, so like Maureen said, we were the recipients of a uh, $192,000 grant from Mass DOT as part of their Shared Streets program. Um, the focus of our grant here, I'll pull up the screen now. Um, purpose of our grant was to address uh, mobility concerns in the bank center. Um, in the, the area around the bank center, um, specifically with a focus on the Musanti Community Health Center, which is located um, in the back of the bank center in this area here. Um, and so not only is the rear section of the bank center uh, fairly inaccessible to those uh, who are mobility um, impaired, but also the Clark House apartments and the Ann Whalen apartments are <clears throat> out of the screen here, but they're, you know, to the uh, west and north, yeah, sorry, no, east, east and northeast of the, the bank center and um, many uh, uh, and predominantly seniors live in those uh, facilities. And um, this proposal also addresses a need for um, seniors and people living in those uh, apartment buildings to be able to access downtown um, through this area. So the grant proposal, um, which we are now in the midst of implementing early stages, uh, had three main uh, kind of project projects fo uh, focus areas. Um, and I think only two of them, the ramp and the outdoor dining area are applicable to the DRB, but I can mention the crosswalk as well. So <clears throat> the first, um, and just to orient everyone, we're in the Boltwood parking garage, you know, uh, to the west is, you know, um, what would be back here, the Judy's Art Bar, Matt's Barber Shop, you know, Bueno Isano's to the south. Um, and so the bank center, you know, is, ho is home to the Senior Center, um, I believe, LSSE offices, as well as the Community Health Center. So it's a fairly busy um, building, many people coming in and out, deliveries coming in. Uh, right now, there's also the vaccine clinic is happening there right now. Um, however, the to get to the rear of the building, you're, there's these uh, crumbling set of stairs right now um, that are, you know, burdensome even for those who are able-bodied but very dangerous for anyone who is, um, has a, is handicapped. Um, and so for people in wheelchairs, um, they have to, to access the Musanti Health Center, they have to go through the bank center and then get down the elevator. Um, and that's not always possible when the bank center is closed because they have different hours. Um, there's also a, a route from, to the, from the back here and down the sidewalk um, but that's not always, you know, there's two handicapped parking spots here. So you want to be able to get, you know, to the entrance um, of the Missanti Health Center as close to the handicapped parking spots or as, as possible. Um, and so luckily there's this kind of town-owned parcel that sits between Johnny's Tavern and the Bank Center. Um, that's a, you know, sloping grassy hillside right now. And the town has applied twice uh, for a grant to build this ramp. It was always something we intended to do ever since the health center <laughs> opened in 20, 
16 or 17, I believe. Um, and finally, we have the money now to build this ramp, which kind of completes the, the project. Um, and so I will show you some, you know, construction drawings of the ramp and some of the details. You know, we're, we're not architects like Hugh and Riddle, so we can't show fancy renderings like that, but we can uh, give you a sense of what it's going to look like. Um, and then second part of the grant is to really activate the Boltwood Plaza, we're calling it. I'm not sure it has a formal name, but Boltwood Plaza seems to make sense as it's in Boltwood Garage. Um, and as many of you know, you know, this is the area, you know, situated in the middle of the parking garage. Um, there's a structure here that I believe has elevators and stairs to go down to the bottom level of the parking garage. And then there's kind of just this uh, three quarter circle um, area with some plantings around it that doesn't, you know, we, we, we placed um, picnic tables there this summer as kind of efforts to promote, you know, socially distanced outdoor dining, a place for people to bring their takeout. Um, and we felt, you know, there was frequently people there. I would go there on my lunch breaks, often from town hall, and there was um, almost always someone there eating, if not a few people. Um, I, I believe the, the picnic tables were only there temporarily or meant to be there temporarily. I, I believe they were taken from a a park somewhere else in town and they've been moved or they plan they will be moved and so we wanted to do something to build on the effort momentum of that first grant um, that we got to place picnic tables there and to make something that's more permanent in this area so we're proposing or we got money at this point to uh, buy permanent furniture um, for this plaza um, and i will show you just some very early ideas of what we're thinking for furniture. Um, I will say the our first priority is to get this ramp built. We need to get the construction uh, out to bid and the details finalized for the ramp. And then, you know, so we're a little bit more vague on kind of what we're proposing to do here because it's kind of the second step. Um, so, and then the third piece is just this crosswalk. As some of you know, it's it's, a dangerous intersection um, because this there's this building here that I believe is associated with the funeral home. I believe in it as people come down from downtown on the sidewalk, it's a blind corner um, for cars that are coming down this way. And so, you know, there's, I don't know if there's been any accidents, but there's a lot of near, near misses. And, um, you know, there's only so much we can do. We can't take this building out, <laughs> but we're proposing to just uh, place what's called like ladder ladder painting on the uh, road to better uh, denote the crosswalk and also um, relocate the stop sign, uh, which should have been done originally, relocate the stop sign before the crosswalk so that people, cars know to come to a stop before the crosswalk as opposed to, I believe it's right here right now. So um, I'm just going to Quickly, let's see. Next is um, details on each of the three projects. Um, you know, there's uh, this is the construction. Uh, I guess it would be the plan for the ramp. Um, you know, at this, it's fairly simple. Um, you know, it's proposed for a you know one to twelve slope <laughs> with with landings. Um, you know, midway through the first slope and then where the uh you know it's an l-shaped ramp so at the you know turn we're proposing a sitting area um with uh, four benches um a light pole to provide illumination at night and then some uh landscape plantings around um i i believe there will be two trees that need to be removed so we wanted to replace those um and add some shrubs as well the uh you know up here um they're proposing two bike racks um a directory sign mostly just to call out the Mosanti health center because there's a lack of signage right now um i'm trying to think what else that's pretty much it um for the ramp it's going to be concrete um with with uh railings with a uh, black polish i believe metal 
Um, so fairly standard, you know, we're a lot, much of downtown has that brick banding that meet that has cement coming up to it. And that often causes issues with heaving um, because they freeze and thought at different rates. And um, there's um, <clears throat> creates an issue for, for mobility. So we're sticking to purely concrete, um, poured concrete and no kind of brick banding at all, just to keep it simple. Um, ben, are you rebuilding those steps? So mm -hmm. yes, good question. The, the steps will be rebuilt. Um, we, the town has money to do that, that they've set aside. So it's not gonna be part of the grant. It's not gonna be grant funded, but it will be part of the same construction that happens this spring and summer. The, the steps aren't, my understanding is that uh, they're gonna be resurfaced, not totally rebuilt. So essentially you, um, they place, they pour another level of concrete over each step and basically build the whole set of stairs out one, one step. Um, and then I believe there's a retaining wall here. That's, uh, I believe, I think it's made of wood, wood, um, wood planks. And that is having some issues right now as some, there's kind of like the soil from the planters are coming through the wood and it's kind of rotting right now. Um, so that, um, I, yeah, what does it say? 12, yeah, 12, 12 foot concrete retaining wall. So that's going to be taken out and replaced with the concrete retaining wall just to sturdy that, that edge up. So that's the ramp proposal. Um, I think that's about as much as there is to it. The proposal for the sitting area and outdoor dining area. Um, and uh, I will say uh, we, we worked with uh, Stantec, a, a techni our technical consultant for this project. They're a landscape architecture and engineering firm. That's, I think, worldwide at this point that we worked with their Boston office. So they, they put these drawings together. Um, so for the Boltwood Plaza area, um, what we're thinking is placing a combination of high top tables with uh, stools and uh, some low top tables that have, you know, movable seat chairs. Um, the idea is that this is, you know, we, we want furniture that has more of an urban plaza feel as opposed to picnic tables, which are more appropriate for parks and our recreation areas of which we have plenty in town. But this is kind of one, truly one of our only urban plazas in town. Um, and so the idea here is, yeah, there's a combination of high top and low top tables uh, the three existing benches will be also replaced as they're in rough shape right now. And uh, we're going to match those with the kind of standard Amherst bench. Um, but the, and then the, the, you know, I'm not sure how this will look quite yet, but the, our consultants did recommend placing wind, wind breaks um, within the a uh, sitting area to obviously break the wind. Um, there's planters here um, that do do some of that already. Um, however, they're recommending some additional metal wind breaks. Um, when I first looked at this, I thought it was due to COVID they were placing barriers in between the chairs, but um, that's not the case. And so I'll show you a rendering or a spec for what that looks like. Um, this is a kind of what, like, yeah, this is, um, just like a conceptual plan at this point, obviously it's meant to kind of like sell the project to the, to the state and get, um, get their approval. It's, it's, uh, done by a landscape architect shows, you know, way much, many, much more plantings than we have now. And is kind of just like a, a vision for for what the space could look like. We're obviously not proposing bright orange tables, um, and the these benches are just kind of like um, 
long rectangular pieces of wood. I, that's not what we had in mind, but it's just the kind of the idea that this place really could have a lot more life than it currently does. Um, and really could be a place where people gather, you know, grab their slice of Antonio's, their Bueno burrito and come sit downtown. Um, and with the plantings, it really does feel like a refuge separated from the parking lot. And here is more of the details on the types of furniture. Um, I don't think any of this is relevant. Uh, this is all standard, but for the bike racks, you know, this is all taken from the Amherst downtown design guidelines, um, which is, I think, from early 2000s. So the, you know, U bike rack, the black finish is standard downtown. The acorn light um, is also standard for downtown. And I believe the DPW has some extra ones already because they're replacing a few this summer. Um, the, yeah, this is the, uh, I believe this is something similar to the standard bench downtown that has black railing, black kind of like armrests and a wood uh, planks for the sitting area and backrest. So that's what we would propose for the three benches that are being replaced. And then for the uh, bistro tables, so these would be the high tops with, uh, these would be fixed in the ground, the, the stools and the uh, table itself. You know, this is an option that the, that Stantec, our consultants found just a, an idea. And I believe, you know, this is a variety, available in a variety of colors. And then lastly, um, you know, we could potentially get umbrellas for this area. We, we had some mixed uh, results with the umbrellas in the outdoor dining areas over the summer, just because, you know, there needs to be someone there who's going to uh, bring them in when it gets windy. Um, and if this area is not really assigned to a specific restaurant, it's, it's more just a public area, you know, it would be a staff person for the town who needs to run over there and wind the umbrellas and bring them down every time it's windy. Otherwise they could, you know, get severely damaged. And so I think we're a little bit, you know, wavering on the umbrellas. If we can find some really nice sturdy ones, then that would be great, but it's not totally necessary. We don't think, um, obviously they do provide nice amount of shade and protection from the rain. So there are certainly benefits. And then lastly, for the movable chairs and tables, um, you know, the, these are some examples that the consultants found for kind of that have more of an urban feel. You know, we, I think um, there's some research in, in the landscape architecture field that's like, you know, people, there's, a, there's something that people really enjoy about just being able to grab a chair. And even if they move it only like a foot just to like, be able to adjust it slightly. If you're a taller person, sit a little bit further from the table. If you want to scoot in and have a conversation, you can do that. But I think, you know, we're, we, we're really wanting, wanting to move in this direction of movable chairs um, and tables. And also it allows some flexibility and kind of group, group size. Obviously there's always the risk of um, the chairs and tables wandering off and being taken, uh, which is certainly a risk. And, you know, I think we could buy some extra to help um, replace them if that does happen. But, you know, that um, I think UMass has been experimenting with that a little bit. And I haven't heard of too many issues with the tables and chairs taking off. So we're, we're comfortable making that choice. Um, and these are just some ideas that the, uh, consultant sent us. Um, and finally, yeah, here these are some of the more steel cafe chairs. And sorry, yes, finally here, this is the idea for the windbreak that could kind of either go up in the planters or and or between the tables to kind of provi provide a little bit of screening, privacy maybe, and um, protection from heavy gusts of wind. So again, I'm not 
I would I would want to kind of see what it looked like, go out there and kind of measure what that what a what that would look like. You know, these are six feet high, I believe. So you know, it's a fairly big um, thing to put in the plaza where there's already not a lot of space. So I think that's also something we will think about further. So um, I believe that's basically it. Um, and I think we only ha have a little uh, longer if um, yeah. I believe some members need to leave at 630. So um, oh, that is let's, yeah. let's uh, open it up to board discussion. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks. Comments. Well, I'll just throw out one. <clears throat> that whole area is such a mess that probably anything you could do would be <laughs> an improvement. And I mean, uh, and for years, the landscaping in that in that whole area has just been so pitiful. So uh, I hope whatever grant you get can bring in some professionals and really do some good landscaping because it's an embarrassment to Amherst to have that area back there. And I don't there's so much you've thrown out here. I'm not sure we can make a big decision about yeah. all yeah. of that. But uh, at any rate, uh, others may have comments. So. And I think having dining in that area has to be completely dependent upon plantings. Because yeah. if you don't have attractive plantings and you don't have some screen from all those cars pulling through in and out of the parking lot, nobody's going to want to sit there. Um, it just, it isn't a, it, a, it, it doesn't have anything to, to attractive other than it's near a couple of those fast food restaurants. That's yeah. about it. So I think plantings are essential. Um, <laughs> Also, can't you chain the chairs to the tables so that if somebody wanted to take it, they'd have to take like all five pieces at once, rather than planning to replace them, which is almost mm -hmm. an invitation to, you know, furnish the frat house with them. <laughs> um, I would, you know, I would just suggest we find some solution that keeps them from being totally, yeah. um, you know, liftable. Yeah, I don't think we can have portable chairs. I really don't. Any other comments, Lindsay, Tom? I do have a few comments. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think these are all great improvements and I'm excited to see them happen. I know we can't magically wave a, a wand and, and fix everything about this area like we'd like to, but I think these are some really great improvements. So I appreciate you know the effort. Um, I think my first comment is about the crosswalk. Um, I wonder if you could also consider doing um, in addition to the stop sign, like some lights um, at the crosswalk. I know there's a few locations where that's been done um, mm -hmm. up by Cushman. There's kind of a blind crosswalk there um, and on Pine Street. So I think, you know, there's some precedent for having that in Amherst and I might just, if nothing else, make people more cautious before crossing because yeah. they see that light there um so that would be one suggestion my other is is kind of around lighting at the ramp um, mm -hmm. because it's such a dark area um and i i get concerned that people will feel nervous about that area at night especially um mm -hmm. it's just it's kind of even during the day it's just very tucked away it doesn't feel like there's a lot of eyes on it in general um, so I'm wondering about just kind of trying to make it more visible. I don't know if it's with plantings or um, maybe even like in an ideal scenario, like raising something above the ground level so it draws attention to it, like a, a pergola structure of some sort over that seating. I mean, I'm not trying to complicate it, but I just think something that kind of makes it feel more visible, um, both so that people know it's there and so that so that people feel seen. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are the two key points and I don't need to necessarily like draw out like how to do that. I just think yeah. I, some, something to kind of address that hidden nature of that location. I had a similar comment if I could layer on to Lindsay. I really appreciate that you brought that up, Lindsay. And I, whether or not you bring in additional light or something overhead, I think those are great ideas. I do, suggest that plantings be, remain low. And I think you know, there is a perception of this is around the back 
Uh -huh. um, and so you want you know, bodies on that ramp to be as visible as possible and not be screened by plantings that are tall. Exactly. Um, and I would be mindful of that in addition to what Lindsay said. Yeah, there's already, I think, some pretty tall plantings around. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's maybe some yeah. thought about how to pull those back a bit or even, I know there's like a, I think they're at least used to me back when I used to go out to dinner, <laughs> um, some like, trash area on the north on that um the north side of johnny's and so it just feels very hidden so anyway um and then i think around the i'm just going to pile all my stuff on because i'm actually mm -hmm. the one who has to leave at 6 30. <laughs> um around the seating i i like that idea i think it's a question a little bit more of like long term like you know it's it, right now we're in such a position of desiring any outdoor seating space we have available. Um, I think Jan's point is well made that like, how do we make this a desirable area and not just like some tables, but I, I guess more um, in thinking about like, is there a way to, to, to be imagining like how to make this plaza a space that even hopefully if there ever could be a post COVID era, um, which I think we all hope that there will be um, that it's still, you know, it's still a place that people really want to go and hang out. Um, so again, I don't have any necessarily like perfect um, examples of how to do that other than, you know, the more kind of like integral, the ideas are to um, kind of long-term design, the better. Um, but yeah, it's a question kind of of like, when we no longer care that much about sitting, sitting outside, um, I mean, I think we always care about sitting outside, but is there a way to just make it feel more, um, more long-term, I guess that's all. Yeah, but so I think it's a, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, and I, I yeah. love the, I love using that space for something that we do need. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's worth a lot of consideration because, um, we just don't have many niches like that. Um, yeah, I mean, this is Tom, I think you know one of the things, Ben, that, that's really interesting about that particular location is that, um, and I know I know Bob from Bueno, you know, threw a couple of picnic tables out there, and all of a sudden people are eating burritos on a picnic table out back mm -hmm. in the summer, and I, I think that there is a lot of potential in that, but I don't I'm, I don't believe that these four or five tables are going to do it, and and I do believe that the space across the way where the brick pattern kind of connects that plaza to the back of the little pathway from Antonio's and the back of Judy's and the, the rear of Bueno has a lot of potential as a public space, a larger public space that can be activated as the kind of, you know, the backside of all these restaurants that don't have a lot of indoor seating. Yeah. So there's something really interesting about what you're doing here, but I think it needs to be a slightly larger project and your illustration that you're um, you know, landscaper did where they, again, I don't love everything they're doing, but I wanted to come forward to this foreground, right? Really connect to this foreground area where the back, where the tunnel underneath Bueno or near Bueno and the, the back alley that's a very popular pathway um, that brings you to this place, you know, it gets activated and you, there's a lot of space there. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I think that that's, that's where the opportunity lies in like connecting this zone that I think people are, you know, you're saying could be used to the big plaza on the other side. So again, the brick is doing that for me. It's stopping cars. It's doing a lot of connecting already. So I, th I think there's um, a little bit bigger of a budget and you've got a few more tables out there um, across the way organized in the right way and it could be really active. I agree okay. with the others. Um, I think that would make a big difference to yeah. coordinate on either side of the drive area. Right. Also, could the um, pedestrian crosswalk in front of the bank center, could that be elevated like some of the other ones that you're forced to slow down because it becomes a sort of hump? Yeah, um, we, we looked into that. I think uh, budget-wise, it was uh, we were kind of reaching our maximum mm -hmm. with the uh, ramp on itself. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, we looked at narrowing the street there as well to kind of pinch cars uh, a little bit and improve sight lines. But uh, because of all the delivery trucks that come in and out of this area, that wasn't yeah. possible either. Right. Okay. Any other thoughts, uh, 
Yeah, I will say, I think, uh, Tom, I totally agree. There's a lot of underutilized space in the foreground here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe some of it, if not most of it's private property. So it, it would involve a, a bit more. Um, yeah, I guess number 10 here says potential property owner contribution. So we, we, we told them, oh, you can keep that there for illustrative purposes. But, you know, that it would involve a lot of outreach and work with uh, the adjacent property owners, which we're certainly willing to, to do and would love to do. But it's it would. Yeah, like you said, it would be a bigger, bigger scope. Yeah. Yeah. I also like the bigger scope. <laughs> I have to say it feels a bit like a an, an island. Yeah. Of, okay. of goodness. Um, I am not as worried about the movable chairs, but I just I, I do wonder if you're in conversation um, with the planning department in Northampton where they have movable oh, yeah. chairs at Pulaski Park. Um, if those have been walking off, if they have a replenishment system. Um, hmm. I, you know, I think it's it's entirely possible that with good lighting and, um, you know, that civic, a, a well-maintained civic space will continue to maintain itself. I, yeah. I'm aspirational there. Um, I'm not a big fan of the windbreaks. So I understand their purpose, but I think that they're super heavy. Yeah. Relative to the scale of the space here, I feel like they're a lot. And, you know, to have something amidst the plantings may make sense, but they're between the, um, the tables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think if they, if you feel that they're necessary, if the designer feels that they're, they're necessary, then, you know, to look for the appropriate product mm -hmm. is, is critical. Yeah. I'd rather see that money spent on better plantings that serve as windbreaks because it yeah. would look nicer and you wouldn't have these big hunks of metal. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. You want me to make a motion? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's hear it. <laughs> okay. So, Design Review Board approves the um, proposed downtown, what is it called? Downtown Senior Mobility Improvement Project um, for Boltwood Walk. Um, with a caveat to consider some of our suggestions and concerns. Yeah. yeah, around the picnic table area, particularly, right? Well, but they also talked about the lighting on that. That's the, true. On yes. The, okay. The, all right. In very general, good. all of them. Yeah. Our. Very good. Because <clears throat> hopefully you could. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Second. Okay. Uh, I'll uh, let me go through. Read the list here. Um, all in favor, Lindsay. Hi. Janet. Aye. Erica. Aye. Tom. Aye. Aye. And Catherine. Aye. Okay. Because it seems like th we could really talk more about this uh, picnic area and because it's a great idea, we just need to get more details on it. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? Uh, so I think, Maureen, we won't uh, uh, take up the uh, rotary, right? Yeah, that's fine. Um okay. Ben, I'm just going to take that off. Um, yeah, that's fine, and we can um, re or we can schedule another meeting um, okay. probably in the next couple of weeks. Uh, okay. I'm not exactly sure what the sort of new deadline is for the TSO, but uh, I feel like we could we could hold a meeting in the next couple of weeks. All right. May I make a suggestion? <laughs> yes. That in the meantime, you take a look at the um, PowerPoint presentation that Ben put together about that intersection. I think it explains what we're trying to do. And okay. then the other thing is, I think what we're going to ask you first is, what do you like about that area? What don't you like? And what would you like to see there? And there's probably a lot more don't you like than there is like, okay. at least in the public realm. But okay. there may be things that you like as well. So if that that's what we want to hear from you next time we meet. Okay. Right. And, okay. and just to um, um, say one other thing about that there are so in the the link that i provided you there are two powerpoint presentations uh related to the intersection mm -hmm. the ones with images uh is the one that uh you can look at them both but the one with the images is obviously the one that you'll you'll get to see the visuals and that's the one that chris yeah. was referring to okay. yeah the other one is really just about schedule and permitting and all of that so okay yeah all right Any do we have else? minutes to approve I do not. I, I have been straight out 
so I, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I do uh, provide memos to the applicants and the building commissioner and who, whoever needs it, but I, 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 uh, I don't have the, 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 I, I just want the time. Orange been working night and day on zoning. <laughs> yeah. Tom Definitely. can attest to that. Yeah. Yeah. She comes to the planning board every week. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. If nothing else, do I hear a motion that we adjourn? We didn't take public comment. I just wanted. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there I just wanted comment? to make sure that we acknowledged oh, it. Thank you. I, and I don't know that there are any, but there are nine participants, and I only see eight of us on the screen. So I was nervous. Oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot all about that. Okay. So Is if there... anyone wants to make a public comment, they could raise their hand using the raise the hand feature. Doesn't look like Hilda has a comment. All right. Okay. All right, good. I forgot about Paul. Okay, so do I hear a motion that we adjourn? I so move. <laughs> okay, is there a second? Come on, Tom. You're okay. always All second. in favor, say aye to adjourn. Aye. 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 Okay. All right. We are adjourned. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Nice to see you all. Nice to see you.